Good morning. We are coming to you live from Machakos County, one of the regions that has witnessed uh, tremendous growth in terms of development with uh, Konza Technology City, expected to give the region a major boost when it comes to economy. Besides that, they have also had uh, the bit of politics, interesting politics from uh, the battles of supremacy to development goals and supremacy and uh, to share more shed more light on this is his excellency governor of machakos county dr alfred mtua who is going to give us a brief and we are going to touch on issues from health to politics and also development goals remember he's one of the people who have already raised concerns regarding their uh, presidential ambitions in uh, future politics. Welcome to the News Check program, His Asante. Excellency. Thank Mr. you very Governor. much, Kaya Asante San Irene, and welcome also to Machakos. And here we are in our Mavoko office in Adi River. So we tend to operate from different offices. That way we can actually ensure that development is happening and change is happening across the county, you know, devolution is about getting services to an age. So, Karibu Sana. Asante, now to get us straight uh, mm. to the agenda, yes. we have heard uh, the issues of rows between governors and uh, uh, MCAs, yes. uh, and this has also affected Machakos County to some extent at some point. Uh, what uh, do you, what is your take regarding this? I think, and, and the, the most important thing is that, uh, you see, when devolution came into being, people realized all of a sudden that it came with power and money. So there were very many interests that started playing around. And, you know, the, the traditional Kenyan way was uh, the initial instinct was, let's bring the governor down. Let's make sure this does not work so that I can take over from the governor. In the last, uh, the first five years, it was mostly the senators. I mean, the senators were fighting governors throughout. Basically, every county. I don't think there's any county where the governor was getting... I uh, was, was, you know, <laughs> was getting along with the senator. Because now, what happened? Majority of the senators ran to be governors. So they thought that the best way of taking over was to pull down the, the governors. And they used the county assemblies to do that. So they used the county assemblies to impeach governors. They used the county assemblies to make life very difficult for governors so that they could take over. The other thing were party leaders. You see, party leaders, especially party leaders who lost, who are no longer in government. Because now you ran for president or you are deputy president or, or you are part of a team or a coalition and you lost, you're out. And but you're a party leader. So you feel like these governors are starting to become too powerful. So you use your county assembly members to cut them down, to bring them down. So Machakos went through this. I mean, you saw Makueni. Uh, basically, there was a whole hearing, trying to dissolve Makueni. Now you're hearing what is going on in Taveta. You hear what is going on in Kitui. You hear what is going on in different parts of the country. So where it's, do you it's stand the same, same. in uh, Machakos? At the Machakos moment. is okay. We learned our lesson. And the MCAs of Machakos, I'm very lucky that I've got very, very smart MCAs. You know, these are not like, uh, uh, I would say, ordinary. You know, these are people who are educated, people who now have realized that they are being used, you know, for whatever reason. And also, there are people who've decided, let us work together for the benefit of the poor of Machakos. Well, it comes to hindsight because <laughs> basically all the MCAs who were opposing me last time, they all went home. Basically, only one MCA was re-elected out of 40. So all the MCAs who were there last time went home. So all these are new. And one inch on the ground, I've told them, where? And your governor to Malize Kazi Mwendele. So most of them have realized that now there's a big agenda, and uh, now we are working closely together, and we've got a consultative uh, system that is working for me. All right, Mr. Governor, but you see, these politics are also extending now to the county level. Yes, the other yes. day you were in Nairobi County mm. inspecting the statutes in the county. Mm. Don't you say this will bring a row between uh, no, county no, leaders? No, we're not inspecting. We are just pointing out an anomaly. And you know, when I was government spokesman, I, I, I credit myself because I'm one of the people who said we need to recognize our heroes. And Ambassador Mudora pointed out during the first Mashuja day, what have we done for our heroes? And I said when you go to Hyde Park, when you go to uh, in London, if you go to Washington, D.C., if you go to Australia, if you go to South Africa, Mandela Square, we've got statues of our heroes. We've got people who fought. The only statue we had was Jomo Kenyatta. 
I said, what about the rest of our states? So we decided, why can't we have a statue of Dedan Kimathi and a statue of Tom Boyer in Nairobi? And we did. And I was part of that committee. So this is something that is very personal to me. Now, a few years later, to see that the ministry responsible, the people responsible, whether they are county or whatever, have neglected these statues. I mean, people are using them as toilets, the area. Uh, they are broken down. I mean, what does that say? And if you go to London, we will not find a statue of a hero with, uh, with being used as a toilet or broken down signage. They take care because nearly 30, 40, 50 million was spent on the whole program to put these statues up. And now they are run down. So I was making a point and saying this is bigger than a county. This is Nairobi is a seat of the government of Kenya. It is not about a county, you know. And because I believe in statues myself, I have built three in Machakos. I've built a statue for, for Paul Ngei. Go there. Go to the junction of Machakos. You'll see it is clean, properly taken care of. All of I have built all of them in studies. very good state. When they are broken down, they, we've got another one of Mwindumbingu. People see Mwindumbingu Street. Mwindumbingu was from Machakos. We've built a very nice statue. There was um, uh, some funny people came and broke the hand. We fixed it in one week. You know, it has been good for the last one year. We've got another one of Mulumutisia in Mulumutisia Gardens, and we're about to do more because we respect our heroes. The reason we're wearing these suits, the reason we're driving in big cars, the reason we're in a beautiful office like this is because people died for the freedom that we're enjoying today. And so we cannot neglect that freedom. We cannot start treating their memory as if it is toilet paper because that is what basically what is happening in this country. So, so the message enough. was it's a national issue. Let us respect our heroes. Let us respect the people who've come before us. May they be our parents, our grandparents, our politicians, our engineers. We need to respect them. You are ruling out on any differences between county leaders. So if other governors they, come they, to no, your region, no, no. You this is have, this is national. Come and point out. You know, come and point out what is not going on well. This is our country. And there is no there is no division that says you can only live or operate in a certain place. Talking of what is not going well, uh, mm. when you look at the health sector, yes. there are allegations that uh, government medicines are being are being sold at uh, private hospitals. Mm. What is your take on that? I mean, it's true. I mean, you look at uh, I I closed clinics, I closed pharmacies, I closed uh, labs that were next to Machakos hospitals. Why? Because I found out when I did uh, a random check, I, I found medicines meant for my people in level five, in level four, who are being sold in those clinics. And they are branded. Government of Kenya, Machakos County, Kemsa. And How it does, and, and they are there. And you, because they are close. And so when, you, when people go to the hospital, they are told, hakuna dawa, hakuna x-ray, lakini uneza pata pale, to clinics owned by health workers. So tukajimalize yu jinga. To Kasema, we don't want them there. And now we've told our people, if a clinic officer, if a doctor here in Machakos County, if a person tells you, akuna x-ray, akuna hii, akuna hii, enda pale, akuna hii, report that person immediately, we arrest them. Because we have over 700 million shillings in credit at KEMSA for medication, for bandages, for x-rays. We have money for universal health care to buy all the things that are needed. So if they are not there, they are not there because we don't have money. They are not there because somebody somewhere, a stupid person somewhere who is greedy is making sure they are not there so that patients can be sent to private clinics where they have interests. But when a government... Na mimi apa, that one now, I don't discuss. Uh, I don't want to know. Uh, don't you think that you are overstepping your mandate as the governor in closing down the hospitals? No, no, it's, no, 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 it's not because the rules are very clear. You shouldn't have a clinic, uh, you know, 300 meters to a hospital. Do you know how far they were? You could actually spit from the clinic and hit the wall of the hospital. That they're just across the road. The clinic is here. There is a buffer of one meter. The seven meter road, another one meter, a sidewalk of 0 0.5 meters, and the hospital. I mean, ni hapa na hapa. And then you go to the hospitals, unakuta, daktari ayuko, you find clinic officers awako, wengine awako, because what are they doing? When I work for two hours kidogo, five hours, we go up around the corner working in their clinics. They're the same measures that you're also trying to imply on the 
industry sector where mm. you're closing down some companies over yes. pollution of rivers. And, and it's, 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 about, it's about impunity. You know, it's, but people it, are losing jobs. Yeah, but it's about impunity. You see, people are losing jobs, but people are also dying. You see, we have to ensure that our people really are focused. You know, for example, now, majority of the health workers in Machakos are wonderful people, and they're great people. So, uh, and I know we have to go on a link, but, you know, it's important to say that let's stop impunity. The laws are there. Let's obey the laws as they do in Europe, and we'll have a great country. We are touching on issues, politics, and development as we focus on county check this week. And uh, just from where we stopped at, uh, yes. and maybe we shift gears to politics, mm. you mm. are uh, aspiring to be a presidential candidate. In I'm, I'm, no, no, no. I'm not aspiring to be a presidential candidate. I'm aspiring to be the next president of the Republic of Kenya. All right, Mr. Governor. No, you Gavin, aspire I to be a candidate in Asia to All right, Mr. Governor. But Gavin. I get your point. Yeah, I just, I want to be, I, I, I believe that the time has come for a generational change. The time has come for new ideas for our people. And uh, uh, l let, me, let me give you a, 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 just a small uh, story of why I want to run for president. When this country got its independence, our first president was Jomo Kenyatta. He was what you call a pre-independence president. His job was to put a foundation of this country, he fought in the Mau Mau. Our second president was Daniel Arab Moy. He was in the LegiCo, the Legislative Council. The one that uh, he went actually to was part of the people who wrote the first constitution. Pre-independence laying foundation. The third president, Mwai Kibaki, was also pre-independence. He was the executive secretary of Kau before he became Kanu in 1950s, together with Tom Boyer, writing session paper number 10. Pre-independence. So we've had three presidents who have always been pre-independence. Ogingo Dinga with uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Pre-independence, getting us from independence to uh, freedom. So their planning was freedom planning. Then we get uh, Railo Molodinga locked up for many years as he wanted to change the constitution to bring proper democracy to our country because we are still at foundation stage, because we need democracy so that we can have economic uh, development. Then Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta is the first president under the new constitution now with the foundation. He's actually finishing putting the slab on the foundation. We have just been on the foundation since we got independence. Our leaders have just been on foundation. The issues of a handshake, you don't have your handshakes in the US, our ski handshake Australia, I'm a Canada, our ski handshake Australia, UK, I'm a France. Handshake ni kwa sababu, badu tunayeka msingi, nyumba ijaisha, tunataka tuskizani. But now that we have the handshake, we need to move on now to putting walls. We need money in our pockets. Democracy is not enough if our people are still poor. And so for that, we need a change of leadership. These leaders have done a lot. If it was not for Jomo Kenyatta, we would not have the country that is stable as Kenya. Moi ensured our country was not overthrown. And uh, Moi Kibaki, economic growth. Railo Molo Dinga, tumepara demokrasia. Uhuru ametupatia stability. But you see, that is not enough. Now, we need to build on, on what they have done. And in the same way, kama derevo wa basi, amuapeleka airport. Uye derevo wa basi, now you need a pilot to take us to the next level. You went to school, Irene. Yes. Ulipomaliza primary school, ama secondary schools. You went to college. Sasa kama si umalimu wa college, alikusomeshe ukapita, ujua wa, wa, wa high school, ukapita, would you have been admitted to college? Apana, sindio. Lakini when you went to college, you did not go with the same teacher, alikufunza primary, ama the same teacher, alikufunza secondary. Si kusema kazi yao ni mbaya, lakini kazi yao imefikia hapo, sasa you need a professor to take you further. And that is why I'm running for president, because I feel that our country now needs new ideas. We need new economic models. We need to be like Europe and the US and Canada and Brazil. And that needs a change of leadership that is now not focused on the foundation that these other leaders have done a good job in putting in place now to take our, our country to the next level. So we cannot in, be poor forever, my friend. In 2022, we should expect uh, your name on the ballot paper. My name, and, if uh, you see my name on the ballot, it means that I'm winning. And I should, and I'm planning to have my name on the ballot. 
and to take over as the next president of this country because I understand how government runs. I was there with the economic revival uh, with Mwai Kibaki. Uh, I've been there with Uhuru Kenyatta. I've been there as a governor. Now this is my second term. I'm educated in the U.S., educated in Australia. I've lived all over the world. I've seen economic models. I have seen how government works, how government doesn't work. So I am well placed to take this country to the next place. I believe you will use uh, the party that you're using right now, your party. Mm. And uh, what if the party members uh, say that you become number two? And they, be, they come up with uh, different I, I, I think, you see, you see this, is, this is a country whereby we'll still have coalitions for quite a while. So I am going to be part of a team. And my plan is to be the leader of that team that is going to take this country to the next level. Have you this identified not, uh, this, this is not, this is not about It's not about Mutua. It's not about, but all I'm saying is that why is it that Mtoto Anazaliwa Sweden na Anatembea Meva Surali na mtoto anazaliwa hapa Machakos na Matako iko nje. And have you identified uko, uh, running mates? Ana, ana viatu, ana nini. We must change. Tuseme, you can have all the good things, you can talk about politics, but at the end of the day it's about money for our people. People have to stop dying like dogs. We need, when you talk about universal health care, here in Machakos nobody shares a hospital, a hospital bed since 2013. Our mothers are sharing with the hot water. Kujeni muone. Okay, Mr. You know, Governor. So we are saying we need some of these benefits that I'm doing in Machakos and more because I've not been able to do everything I wanted to do so we can do it in our country, Kenya. You know? Have you and identified so, your running mate? Yes, I've, I've not. It's too early. But I have people and it will come out in the next few days. We have people we've been talking to, very, very senior people in this country who we think the same way and all we are thinking is about Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. We are tired of our youth sleeping hungry. We are tired of our daughters staying at home and we've educated them because they cannot get a job, because the economy has slowed down. We are tired of manufacturing not moving because of corruption, our roads not moving because of high level corruption. We have to have a new change in this country. Otherwise, it would have been better had we just been left to continue being under the colony of England. But then we would be better off. You're still because the governor. Because nguvu, na sisi tukapua nguvu ya kumiliki, lakini tukaanza nguvu ya kuiba. You're still the governor of Machakos County. You have yes. two more years to Three go. more years. Three, three. Three, three and a quarter more years. All right. So what legacy do you want to leave behind? And uh, by, by 2022, I'll make Machakos the model region. Not only in Kenya, but in in our area, in East Africa, East and Central Africa, if not the whole, uh, the whole of the African continent. We are doing great things here. We are planning. We are just about, we are just had a cabinet today, planning on putting up an airport because that airport will bring, will bring billions of shillings to Machakos County as they do when they build all over the world. We are building our new city. It is under construction as we speak. People keep on asking, where is it? We want to bring tourism. Uh, to Machakos, we want to enhance the ability of people getting the basics so that there is water. I've dug over 500 boreholes. I want them to get to nearly seven to 800 boreholes. We've dug 230 small dams. Now we're doing mega dams. So we want to get to about five to 600 dams. River wears. Mambo ya maji tumalize kabisa. We are opening up roads. I've built more tarmac roads than many other leaders, and I'm going to continue doing that because that brings the economy. I have put over a thousand mulikamwizis and lights in our towns. Talking so that about we can, we can uh, keep the economic movement, people working late. Because for me, it's about people being given opportunity to work and to make money. Talking about uh, tourism potentials, mm. what are these areas that we have tapped and what are we doing in improving and adding the numbers to the you county? Know, <laughs> you know, the other day uh, I was telling a group, Croatia until 1990 something was basically a third world country after breaking up with Yugoslavia. The late 90s, it became a nation. Croatia today is in a position to lend Kenya money. It's a small country of 4.5 million people that was in the third world less than 20 years ago, 25 years ago. It was a third world nation. When some of the unemployed youth are working were not even born, you know? The Croatia was so poor today, they went to the World Cup the other day. They were in the finals of the World Cup. A very small country. You know, when, when, I, when I look at some of those countries and the economic changes that have happened, they give me motivation of what we can be able to do here. And so I'm looking at Croatia, I'm looking at those countries so that Machakos can be 
that example. And Croatia today gets 20 million tourist visitors. 20 million tourist visitors. Hawana Simba, Hawana Ndovu, Hawana Mount Milima kama Mount Kenya, Hawana Bahari kama ya Bahari Hindi, where there's an Indian Ocean, Hawana Hizo Vitu Zote, they get 20 million visitors, we are barely getting a million tourism. So we have to change how we market ourselves. We have to change the things we build. Why do they get tourism? Because you go to everywhere in Croatia, there's a clean toilet. You go to everywhere in Croatia, there's a good hospital. You go to everywhere in Croatia, there are clean supermarkets. Systems work. There is no corruption. There is proper security. Because the police take care of you. People feel comfortable going to Croatia. You can go with their children to Croatia. They fall sick. You're not afraid. You can go to Croatia and use a clean toilet in any of the towns. 20 million visitors. Now, oh, now they don't even have a fraction of what we have. In Kenya today, we should be recording at the very minimum. 100 million tourists a year. That is easy money. And, I uh, tried it in Machakos. Now, let's talk uh, about the tourism products that we mm -hmm. have. We have the Moa Hills. And you know, in uh, attaining all these goals, th there are challenges on the way that are making us to slow down a bit. What mm -hmm. are these that are uh, lagging us behind in achieving our I, I think some of it is some of the politicians don't understand. Some of the politicians don't understand that tourism is what you call soft money. You make so much money from tourism with all lot of effort because the things are already there. It's just about enhancing them. When you say you want to build an airport so that tourists can come, so that now cargo planes can come, so that now warehouses can be built and jobs created, some people do not see that. One or two, kweka magic kidogo, kabarabara kidogo. But you'll get money there to build better roads later. Some people do not understand the importance of tourism. That's the challenge. You know, when I built the Machako Stadium in one month, what was I Ah, stadium, stadium, stadium. Look, now you go to Machakos town, people have expanded their shops, people have expanded their eating places. Why? Because every weekend, every two days, every three days, there's a football match. It's a FIFA-approved stadium. I built it in a record one month. When I built the Machakos People's Park, people now conglomerate their 30 to 50,000 Every month, talk to the taxi drivers, talk to the cab, talk to Mamambogo, Atakwambia, Biashara, Imechacha. That's just, just a very small example. So we've drawn a tourism circuit from Mavoko here to the Moor Hills. We've got a mountain in, uh, near Machakos town, in Machakos town, where actually has what we call reverse uh, gravity. Ukimwaga maji kwa mteremuko, instead of the water going downhill, it ends uphill. Ukieka, ukipeleka gari hapo, hiyo gari ukieka free. Instead of rolling backwards, inapanda mlima. It's reverse gravity. It happens in some parts of the world. So we want to market that. We're looking at the Masinga Dam, which is in also in Machako, so we can have water sports. We're actually building something I don't talk about, but we're building a big tourism center in Machakos, in, in, in addition to a conference facility. There's something that is going to shock Kenyans. It's going to bring millions of people to Machakos and give us money there. So we are capitalizing on what we have and making sure that we bring money there. And also the Konza City project. Uh, the Konza uh, City project, which is a national government project, has never really taken off. My Machako City will be take off faster than, than Konza. All right, that was His Excellency Governor Alfred Nganga Mtua, yes. the head of uh, Machakos County, and he has touched on matters politics, health, and uh, general development. Back to you, Troy, in Broadcasting House.